Hey, Bass Geek here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the basics of jig fishing from the bank. What's up, Bass Geek Nation? Thanks for joining me on the channel here again. Man, I can't say thank you to you guys enough. The views, the subscriptions, things have been through the roof if you have not subscribed to this channel and you watch please subscribe and make sure you hit that bell so that you get the notifications when these videos come out it really does help the channel but anyway got some really cool stuff coming out for the nation to have you guys represent your affiliation with bass geek nation Hopefully we're gonna have that merchandise coming out real soon. It may take a little bit, but I've got some really cool design ideas that I've got some people working on for you. But for now, make sure you go and you check out the Bass Geek store, literally right under this video, or you can go to my YouTube page and you can see store, and you can go buy Bass Geek merchandise, just like this cool hoodie that you see me wearing all the time. All right, anyway, let's get on with talking about fishing jigs from the bank. Now, I know a lot of you guys that fish from the bank have a hard time fishing jigs. And we're going to get into the basics of jig fishing from the shoreline today. Now, the very first thing I want to talk to you about is the actual jigs. Now, there's a lot of other jigs out there that you can look at. If you haven't seen my jigs 101 video, make sure you go check that out. It'll give you the jigs that, you know, kind of the, the complete range of jigs. So let's talk about the three to four jigs I would use fishing from shoreline. And I'll give you a breakdown of probably my top two to three. Now, the very first jig that we're going to talk about is going to be a swim jig. If you've got a lot of grass around, that swim jig is going to be what you want to throw. Now, that's kind of a specialized situational jig, and you can actually sub in some of the other jigs that we're going to talk about for that swim jig. Now, the very next jig is going to be your regular ball head finesse jig. And guys, we'll really talk about weights. Weights when you're fishing from the bank is super important. So weight of a jig, especially if you're fishing a softer bottom, is going to be extremely important to you. We'll talk about that a little more later. So a finesse jig, a ball head, that's another good jig that's going to come through cover, you know, rocks, hard bottom, mucky bottom, a little better. It's going to be a little lighter, a little more compact too. Now, the next jig is going to be a football head jig. A football head jig, again, good and wide. It's gonna be real good for those hard bottoms. Some of the mucky stuff, but I would really prefer that when you're really fishing those gravelly rock sort of areas, the real hard bottoms. Now my top two jigs, my number one jig is probably going to be my arky, my casting. Some people call it a, a skipping jig, but it's got that arky style head, wide, flat. You're going to be able to do a lot of things with it. It's a great all around jig. Really that arky jig is such a diverse jig. You can swim it if you want. It's not going to come through grass as well as like that pointy head, but you can do so much with that jig. You can skip it, you can pitch it, you can cast it and drag it. That jig does everything very very well now probably the other jig and these are the really my top two jigs is going to be this jig right here and this is the new trash master again i'll tell you i'm not sponsored by them i had to pay for these myself this is not a sponsored deal but what i love about this especially if you're starting it's got a pointy head so it's going to swim real well it doesn't have a brush guard because you texas rig the soft plastic the trailer on to the jig so it makes it texas rig and extremely weedless even more weedless than your normal jigs are anyway the other thing is you can throw this out and because of the way the hook sets it will keep the trailer up in a somewhat stand-up position 
close to the way an archie head does. So it doesn't roll over quite as bad as let's say around a ball head or something to that effect. Lastly, with this jig is that you can pitch it and skip it just as well as the Arky head jig. So guys, one of the first things you're gonna hear me talk about in a lot of my jig videos, because I fish from a boat a lot, is the jig size. And I like, you know, a half ounce. That's kind of my go-to size, that three eighths ounce. But now I'll be honest with you, when you're fishing from the bank, you're gonna to wanna to downsize that. You're gonna to wanna to look at that three eighths, that quarter ounce or less those lighter sizes are going to allow you to fish uphill and that's the thing you've got to remember 90 percent of the time you're going to be fishing uphill so you're going to be dragging up and over things and it's a whole lot easier to get hung up when you're dragging that bait up and across things as opposed to pulling it down those shelves down those rocks and just letting it fall off of that stuff so that's the very first thing you have to remember downsize the weight it is critical when bank fishing a jig the next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about colors guys keep it very very simple you know i stick to about five colors but from the bank you know if you're throwing a swim jig you may want to go with that white but generally about four colors will get you through any day on the water go-to colors green pumpkin watermelon i like a watermelon red of course and a, some sort of black 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 or blue those colors are going to get you through 90 percent of the water that you're going to encounter now again if you're throwing that swim jig and you've got shad you're going to want to go with something like a white otherwise if you're fishing ponds and you've got brim, so some sort of sunfish, bluegill, whatever, you're absolutely going to want to go with those green pumpkins or those uh, watermelon reds. All right, so when I'm out on the boat, I fish a lot of different trailers. I think when you're fishing from the bank, you're better off fishing a trailer that has a lot of action to it. And the reason why is because you're going to consistently be fishing shallower than I will be. So slowing the fall of that jig is extremely important. So something like your rage crawls, your vile crawls, or like bass munitions wild crawls, that's also gonna help prevent you from getting hung as much because you have a much slower fall and it's not gonna really wedge itself in the bottom or the bottom cover. All right, guys, so now let's talk about rod, reel, and line. Now, I know you can't carry a bunch of different rods and reels with you. So let's talk about a single rod and reel combo to do it all with your jig set up from the bank. Me, I'm going to go shorter. I'm going to stay at that seven-foot level because, as you can see, with the trees around me, it's going to be hard to cast anything over a seven-foot seven six i want to be able to cast in the cover but still get some distance on my cast so i'm going to stay in that seven foot length range secondly we're going to talk about line now depending on what you're doing and what type of uh cover you're fishing you can go straight braid if the water stays dirty enough me i fish a, a lot of wood there's really no grass in here if you're fishing grass straight braid is a great option but again no grass in the lakes that i fish really no grass in most of the ponds that i fish so fluorocarbon is the deal for me i don't like how braid sounds when it comes across and it can saw into the bark of the tree and get itself hung up for you that's the other thing don't be afraid to throw a jig into the worst of covers a lot like this cover right here the heavier the cover the more likely a big bass is going to be in it so line if i'm going braid i'm probably going anywhere from 50 to 65 pound braid if i'm going fluorocarbon because you're going to be doing so many things with it you could be pitching you could be casting and skipping 
I would say that 17 to 20 pound would be where you want to go. You can get away with 15 if you're not doing a lot of, you know, pitching into heavy cover, you've got pretty much open banks, downsize to about that 15. I wouldn't go much less than that. So real speed, guys, again, you I know fishing from the bank, you're only taking one, two, three rods 90% of the time, three combos 90% of the time. This is gonna be a good combo. You can throw spinner baits on it, you can throw buzz baits on it just by replacing the leader. And that's a big, big thing. I would definitely use leader 90% of the time. If I was gonna use leader, I'd use something like 15 feet, 15 to 20 feet of fluoro to my braid. Touching back on the, the line. That way you're, you're a little more diverse when you're out on the bank. You carry a couple of spools of mono or a spool of mono, a spool of fluorocarbon you're good to go. But the real, this is a $100 lose LFS. It's a seven five to one, it's a workhorse. It just gets the job done doing a lot of different things. So this combo right here is gonna do a lot of different things for you. Like I said, seven five to one, it's quick speed, great for spinner baits too, great for buzz baits. You can get away with using it for frogs or walking the dog sort of baits. Um, anything, even Texas rig worms. So it's a great combo to do a lot of different things. And as far as the rod, seven foot, medium heavy, fast action. That's where I'm gonna go. Guys, one thing that I can tell you as a bank angler too, you really need to look into, and that is these TRC rod covers. And this is the reason why. Guys, they're gonna keep your rods from getting tangled up. They're gonna keep them from getting tangled up in the brush in the undergrowth they are great they're going to keep you from getting tangled up in your uh, your hooks in your uh, cover so when you're carrying them all together they are great to protect your rods like i say the great thing about it is this tip right here is very hard if i drive that into the ground a lot of times it's just going to come right up if I drive it into the asphalt or the concrete, the same thing. It's just gonna pop right up. It's not going to break your tip off. It's gonna give you a lot more protection. So make sure you're checking out TRC. And, and that's another thing, these don't just slip off. You know, they don't, they don't just fall off. So you don't have to worry about them sliding off and fighting with them as you're trying to get through the underbrush and get to that hard to get to spot. Like I said, I mean, this thing does not come off. It's got foam in the tip. So all you have to do is slide it up in the foam and you don't have to worry about this sliding off and fighting with the thing that's supposed to be protecting your rods as you try to get to those tough spots. Now let's talk about approaching the lake. Now really I'm already too close to the water's edge here. When you're moving up on a spot, try your best to make a cast to that spot without getting close to it. Because the fish, if they're up shallow, they will feel your vibration. Now, I know most of you guys already know this, but they will feel your vibration. So before you get as close as I am, and I'm probably five feet off the water, I would say, 15, 20 feet, make you a quick cast right in front of the place that you're gonna, maybe even make two or three, right in front of the place that you're getting ready to stand at the water's edge. A lot of times when you come walking up, that vibration from the ground to the water will spook those fish off. So you might lose a chance at catching a big fish that's just sitting right in the place you're gonna be standing. Let's talk about two or three casts, all right? The very first thing, and again, we're gonna throw the Trash Master around because it's very weedless and it makes for a great pitching bait. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it right in the worst, in the worst. I'm gonna shake it around. And I'm gonna hop it out. I mean, that's how weedless this thing is. But I wanna make sure that I'm picking apart this heavy cover. But as you can see, I'm pitching 
right into the heaviest of cover. Keeping my rod at a nine o'clock at a flat level and just popping it up just a little bit. And then I'm gonna hop it right out. Now guys, I can see I'm in pretty shallow right here. I know there's no fish in this. I can see that because I'm wearing polarized sunglasses. That's another thing for fishing from the bank. It's extremely important. Sometimes you can eliminate areas just by your vision with a good pair of solarized glasses. Guys, everything I use in this video and everything I use as far as sunglasses and all, these are solar bats. They are, it's all in the description. There's links to all this in the description in every video. But like I said, flipping, to some short line cover can be the place where you catch some really big bass. All right, guys, so the next thing, once you've made those few casts to the shoreline before you get to it, now where you wanna start is not casting directly out into the deep water. Now, I'm not saying they're not out there, but more than likely where you're gonna wanna cast is right there. You're gonna to wanna to work each side in the shallow water first. Now, retrieve wise, pretty much the same thing. Keep your rod tip at about that nine o'clock, reel down and pull up. I definitely suggest hopping this bait when you're fishing it from the shoreline as opposed to dragging it. Small movements of that rod tip as you come back to it. You can tell we've got a lot of wind blowing in right here, and this is a perfect little point, perfect little area for us to fan cast. We're gonna start up shallow, and we're gonna work ourselves out to the deeper water. Sometimes you'll feel it get tight. When you feel it start to get tight, Give it a little bigger hop because you're coming up over something like a big rock or like a stump or, or you know a log, some sort of cover that might hit you hung up. All right guys, so reading the bank contours is key. You know, out on a boat, I've got my graphs and I think they make a few graphs uh, like the deeper, that sort of stuff. But being able to read bank contours from the bank is key. We look at these trees out here and we can obviously tell that there's a small point that comes out. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is flip those trees because they're in a little deeper water. And once I've done that, I'm gonna to wanna to contour that point and cast out to where I think the tip of it might be. Now, the great thing about a jig when you're fishing areas like this, the jig is going to tell you what the bottom is made of. Guys, I hope this helps you gain a little more confidence in doing the things you need to do to throw the jig from the bank. Like I said, if you've got a lot of grass, really look into that quarter ounce swim jig. That is going to be a killer for you. Remember, match the hatch as far as the colors go. You're fishing a lot of shad lakes with that swim jig, you wanna go with white. You're fishing a lot of ponds that have brim. You wanna go more, like I say, with those green pumpkins, those watermelon reds, that sort of stuff. Same way goes because you're mimicking a crawdad most of the time when you're dragging it on the bottom. So your greens, your greens and orange, your blacks and blues, you know, your uh, watermelon reds, they all work great. Like I always say, if you've got any questions and need more information about fishing jigs from the bank or from the shore, make sure you leave those comments in the comment section below. I love to talk about fishing with you guys. As always, like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you guys ring that bell and do me a favor, share your favorite videos out from Bass Geek. Helps grow this channel so that I can do more for you guys. And you guys rock.